Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. I'm Treacherous Krista. And we're joined by Judith Roberts, the matriarch of The Last Thing Mary Saw, which premieres tonight while we're recording this at, um, well, it's coming to Shudder, and it's premiered tonight on Fantasia Fest. Great. Hello. Hello. Yeah, and you got to see the movie. I did. Lucky me, because they were saying you couldn't see it outside of Canada. So I, I did get to see it. And uh, uh, so I um, it was it was really great. It was beautiful. The mm-hmm. use of of candlelight and fireplace light was really lovely. A lot of other things, too. Is the director going to come? To, uh, uh, we interviewed him Thursday. Oh, you did. Show. OK, great, great, great. I'll see him another time. Yeah, we have right. talked. And so. <laughs> He said great things about you. Well, it's lovely. Yes, we had a great time. There's a lot of beautiful stuff, you know, in the film Mm -hmm. and sad stuff, I think. Um, It it really is. It it sort of goes along with what's happening in the world here today, I think, in many ways. Um, uh, Is there any way I can get this meeting is being recorded, taken off? I I think if you just hit OK on it or something, it'll go. OK, let let me try this. I don't want to I don't want to leave meeting. Let's see. No, that's well, that's OK. Maybe I can move it to the side. Does it say OK or something like that? Does it say? No, it says got it. Oh, that's right. Got it. Yeah. Instead (laughs) of OK, it has got it. (laughs) That's all right. I don't I mean, if you hit got it, I think it goes away. It goes away. I'll hit, got it. A little, little harder. Nope. But that's all right. All right. Let me see if I can move it up. Anyway, whatever. I, um, I've seen your faces, which are both <laughs> lovely. So uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but the film, to get back to that, is it's, it's, it's a terribly sad story in many ways of a, of a, of a, group of people are so committed in believing believing in things that are not not true not not um not true in life and in the spirit and uh, uh and he's rendered it uh uh so beautifully to eduardo has done that so beautifully that um i really love love what he did mm-hmm. and the actors of uh, terrific. That's a great cast. Um, uh, yeah. Are any of those elements what interested you in the project? Um, kind of the tie into modern day, or is that something you notice? Yeah. Much? Oh no, yeah, it does tie into modern modern day. What we were just talking about earlier about mm-hmm. people uh, believing um, uh, conspiracy theories and totally believing something other than which something that 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 comes from a trained person Mm -hmm. and certainly this is it it's a belief against the other and also the two young girls love each other and um they are unable because of the times about 1840 and they are unable because of of how people view this kind of relationship. They are unable to participate or live their lives. And the degree of how they are treated is pretty, pretty scary and awful, you know? It, um, now, so when you read the script, did you pick up on a lot of these things? You know, um, Yeah, was there was that. Thing? And and the script became, as we worked on it, he worked on it moment to moment, I feel. He would change something, an idea would get changed because it was really ultimately more right for what was happening in the moment. And um, the... Uh, and... and it just seemed, oh, and you know what was wonderful? The place, the location that we had, which was on Long Island. And it was winter when we filmed it. 
and it snowed a couple of times, and the house had all the elements of a a something gone wrong, terribly wrong. So it um, the people moved through this house as though it didn't belong to them. It was it was something ingrained in Lamenda. Um, it it the fireplace is the candlelight, the feeling of of not belonging, none of those people, and they uh, and the hatred of each other, or their non hatred of, or their love of each other, or just not knowing how to participate. It was very sad. It's sad, yet wonderfully rendered. So it's uh, it's a great story, and it's a story that applies to now. I feel. You know, um, as an actor, when you're in a house like that or, or any setting, um, does that add to how you're going to play the oh, character? It sure does. I, it, it, it can almost change things if you if there's a part of the house or there was a t- couple of times. It was hard to see sometimes at night if you wanted to. It was better to move outside. So uh, there would be someone who would come and and we'd take hands and we walk through an area that that was very dark and very very uh, unusual in its setting and so whatever that was adds to the moments that you're working on and inside the house there only seemed to be fireplaces and candlelight and and um, it was it was kind of kind of wonderful and then it snowed once and it was so beautiful on the trees everything was hanging from the trees like the people seemed to be hanging from the trees it was it, it was a terrific location the house was frightening yet embracing in a way and it it added to it it added to it um, you said, you know, look beautiful and Eduardo did a great job and this is his first feature. So uh, when you're on set and it's the first time, um, you know, first time director, he did shorts, but first time director uh, yeah. making a feature. Did you have a feeling like, you know, he's uh, what did you think of him as a director? I guess. Oh, I have to say he's kind of amazing. It it it, it um, he believed in what he wanted to say in the film. He believed in what he wanted to do. And he st- he had to change his mind about many things. You've got money issues. You've got all of that stuff. You've got all of the stuff saying, well, we want you to do this, that, or the other thing. And so you've got issues you have to deal with. But throughout, he stayed with this human idea. It, it, is, it can be, this is a horror film in a way, but it's a lot more than that. Though horror, I happen to love, it frightens me, but I do like it because oftentimes it says a lot of things that, that don't get said in other ways. I really do believe that. And so he, um, he has made, he is stuck when he was very strong in this. And I feel from when I watched it the other night, the first element was absolutely right in it absolutely right i knew where i was supposed to be watching the movie and that's very unusual and i think he has i think he has a terrific career ahead i really do and i i wish him well all the way but it it is and i'm not just saying that the very first beginning the even though my computer wasn't that great to watch it on, it, it is, um, he was keeping in the sense, he, he said exactly where, he, where, I, where I wanted to be in watching it. And um, he let me know where he wanted me to be more than I wanted. So it, um, very impressive, very impressive. So. Um. When you prepare for a, you know, a period piece, um, what do you do for preparation as far as like the dialect? How are you going to, you know, do the dialect? Well, they really, we talked about the dialect in a way. Uh, 
I felt in this character, she appears here and there. She, um, there's something very dark about her to begin with, very, um, uh, her belief systems seem to me to be so strong that she cannot get away from them. And she becomes sad to me. She's became like a very, kind of very sad person in some ways. Her inability to reach out to any of the young women to do anything. She was caught up in her own being so much that that's what I noted first of all about it when I first saw it and felt I get that. I, I get that. I get that, what it would be. This seemed to me her voice was very, um, let's say, uh, like, um, it felt very deep to me, much deeper when I spoke at all. It would seem to me that, that uh, not so much a dialect, but a, a deeper rendering of the sound. And um, without making it seem pretentious or all of that, but and it just sort of happened. So, um, and as you look at the people you work with, you say uh, maybe she just loved the girls too much. You know, who knows? You can come up with all kinds of things, even though she hurt them so much. It it uh, still at the same time jealousy, all of those things that come into it. So it was not hard finding an answer to her. Uh, Trista, do you have a question? You mentioned that you love horror. I'd love to know what some of your favorite horror films are. Well, I don't know as I have. A fa I mean, I've done, I did a thing called um, Dead Silence. I don't know if you know that one. It um, That was my first rendering into with James Wan directing. And um, it, was a, it was a creature who, who turned people into puppets. Uh, but there's something in that film that I, I, by doing that film, I sort of fell in love. I don't follow necessarily uh, looking for horror movies, but I incorporate them in when they appear to me and I want to look at that one. Um, like, for instance, there's a thing called Border. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if you'd call it a horror film it or not, but it's an interesting thing from Denmark. But the one I did, which was Dead Silence, I found fascinating. I mean, what they, what they, could, what they could do, and they had the money to, you know, to do all this stuff. But it, it is, it, I had such respect for the people who do makeup and do all of this because they spend so much time on makeup and that too. It, it is all of the elements that go into making a movie and a horror movie too is pretty phenomenal. Was that the first time you had a lot of makeup for a movie? Yes. That, that, that took forever to take off, <laughs> excuse me, and put on it. It is, um, I had never worn that much. I'd had makeup. I did a funny, funny show on, um, let's see, oh, a thing called Heart She Holler. I wouldn't exactly call it horror, but it certainly was a genre um, that was kind of wonderful. And the, the, the director, John Lee, was fabulous. But anyway, the... Um, Going back to um, um, the the one where James Wan directed it, it was, I have to say, was an amazing experience. I wore two contact lenses at the same time in each eye. I remember that. And somebody would have to lead me to where I was supposed to go. They wanted green eyes or they wanted, I mean, the... It, 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 it was every turnaround was something new for me anyway, at that time, you know, it was 2005. We did that. And it, um, it was, it, it was frightening yet, yet just kind of beautiful, the house, 
all of the objects, the people who did the set directions, the makeup people. I remember once um, there was this, I was out in California where they did some of the makeup for it and I mean, designed it. And um, uh, the man who did it, designed it out in the valley out there was, was um, um, he said, you want to see this? I'm going to pull back this cover and he pulled back the cover and it was an absolute replica of this guy that was in the film. It was so many things astonished me in that and were fascinating to watch. I could have sat on, I could have sat on the side and watched it being done. Did you uh, study ventriloquism at all for the movie? No, no, that, that was, that was a little bit of the, I would say, on the producer's parts or, or their idea that you could learn how to be a ventriloquist in, in a few days. You, you were hired for this thing. Nobody said, you know, too much about that. And uh, nor did they say, well, let's start a month ahead of time and see what we can come up with. And uh, no. So we... Um, we started and it somehow through different machinations, we finally got someone in who could do certain things. If I was in another position, if he was under my skirts, you know, to we, we did one way or to take when that happened, it was pretty funny. And, um, but we managed with very little, you know, shown there to, I hope it was somewhat believable. So anyway, it, it was not, it was not ideal in a certain way. Yeah. But. Um, how, how did it come about that you got the role in, uh, in Dead Silence? Did you have, to, was there oh, an audition? Well, I, I did. We never talked about being a ventriloquist. Mm -hmm. We talked about being this woman. And, and we would try different things in reading little sections that they never used in some instances, but did use in others. And so I just, um, we just played around with improvisation, which is always it, the best way to do it. I think it, in an audition is, there was another thing I did, which was not a <clears throat> horror movie, but which was based on a, or a book by Joe Hill, which was um, uh, Nosferatu. Oh, I actually just read that book. Yeah, well, they, yeah. we did a series. I did a series called Nosferatu. Right. And there's a couple of wonderful sections in that that, that are, um, I thought his writing was terrific, didn't you? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, well, I listened to the audio book. I say read it, but yeah. Audio book, yes, but she's terrific. The lady who did that audio book. Yeah, terrific. yeah, she, yeah. Um, I did, I from, did um, Orange is the New Black, Black with her, and she did the audio book, and I remember telling her how it was wonderful, wonderful what she did. And so I, um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, she really captured, uh, I think, the emotions of all the characters. It was um, even on the, because I listen to audiobooks while I'm walking, and uh, they have an interview with Joe Hill after it, and he yeah. mentioned that he heard her doing a short story of his on a, like an anthology. Yeah. And she nailed all the, the things that he, you know, he wanted to get he across. Wanted. And yeah. so that's why he wanted her to do uh, Nas Yeah, Yeah. Well, he was totally right. Totally right. I mean, uh, the writing, you know, I don't know. And well, Nosferatu was, was, was what it was, but the book I thought was really good. Because I listened to her on that, too. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just her. It was the book itself. I just thought his writing was terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you, uh, so did you uh, listen to the audiobook in preparation of the, the show? Well, it was, it was, had sort of, come, I, I didn't get it right off. No, actually, when I auditioned for it with this casting place, it had been such a terrific experience doing it, actually, that that they had me back again. We did it again, and um, uh, I never got to the book until we started. Until I got it, mm -hmm. and then I started listening to the book. 
absolutely. Uh, but they're, they're very human. It's a very human experience for the name of the character is Jolene July. And uh, so it was very clear where she was coming from. And um, so that was, um, so a number of things are, are half horror movies, actually, that I've done. And even though Nosferatu, well, it is. It is considered that. Certainly, it is in the book form. Mm -hmm. But um, it was great. Do you, well, do you look at those movies at, or, or shows, whatever they are, do you look at, when you approach them, do you approach them as horror, or do you just approach them this no, as you know, acting? No, I don't think of that. It's just, you know, I just make it as part of the human experience. You know, because that's what it is. It doesn't matter whether it's horror or some horror or some horror. Yeah, there is the accent. Um, <laughs> we were talking know. beforehand about, because uh, uh, Judith is from Boston. and I'm Right. And so I said, horror. Yeah. Talk to <laughs> Casa <laughs> Horror. Anyway. Anyway, no, the, the, if it's a horror genre, I think it should get more real because then, then it becomes... If you can do that, if you're given the time to do it and to do, to do the whole thing, then it then it becomes better, you know. So so it, it it's just, it's human, more human. You know? Yeah, I yeah. think the horror comes out then if you're yes, into the character, the absolutely the characters. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Right, exactly. Uh, Tristan, you have another question. Yeah. Do you have any advice for someone who might aspire to a similar career as yours? Oh, let's see. Oh, if you want to act, I mean, listen, I'm 80, I'm 86 years old. I'm doing pretty well. The, the, the pandemic has not been a thrill in terms of getting work as we all know. It's, 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 but that's another situation. You can't do anything about that. But in terms of, of doing what you think you might love to do. You gotta, in order to act, you have to really want to do it. You gotta love to do it because it ain't the easiest profession, let's face it. It's not, it's not um, roses all the time for sure. So I think that's the first prerequisite to really love it and feel you have something you want to express. And if you feel there's something you want to express, then learn some of the particulars about it, learn some techniques, learn how to dance, sing, whatever it may be, because it all helps. And stay with that connection and do, do all kinds of little, little shows here. Them talking about young, you know, because when I talk at NYU or places like that, and, and, and the kids are great. I mean, I, I wonder how they're getting through all of this. But I have to say the young people are fabulous. And they, um, they teach me things. But the thing is, love it and then work on what it is. You know? And then you'll see what happens. Was acting always something was what? was acting was acting always something that you loved and what and was that? Well, the yeah, I mean, way back I wanted to be a singer an opera singer, actually. I worked on that and did some work on singing and did some singing things, Beto Brecht and stuff like that. And um, I um, uh, I did that for a long time, but not, not as much as I worked on the acting. And it's funny, the older you grow, um, you get it. You begin to really get it even more. I mean, get what it is. I guess because you relax a little behind, you know, age and stuff. <laughs> Not worry so much about age. Well, um, I've noticed because I've watched, I've watched a lot of movies before, but I watched them specifically for the interview. And you have a lot of presence on screen. Is that something that you can work on, or is that just something you have or you don't have? I, I mean, probably something you have, but, don't, but you know, some some actors just don't like to, they don't they don't want to talk talk about things and stuff, and that's fine. You know, some people don't mind it as much as others. Some people say, "Ah, oh, just keep me away from all of that or whatever it is." Some people are better at it than others. It's it's I think it is instinctual a little, but I have you know I'm. 
I'm a kind of person, I like people, I like to find out about them. You know, even though I'm being interviewed, I like to find out where they are too. So it's partly that, you know, it's interesting, makes it more interesting. And very expressive eyes. Oh, eyes come across okay. very well. thank you. You're thank welcome. You. And you play, uh, this is not a negative, you play uh, creepy very well. And you're a very nice person here. So. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I know, because I do believe a creepy is very human. You know, it's not, um, it's not a creepy, actually. It's, it's real. That's what makes it creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's very that true. makes any sense. It does know. make sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if it, if it wasn't real, you know, you wouldn't worry about it. Like, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, the lead of um, oh, the last thing Mary saw, uh, Stephanie Scott. Uh, what did you think of her? What was she like to work with? They all were lovely. They all had they the 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 um, young people. They all have careers. They all have you know, they're busy. They're busy. They're busy. They're busy. And but but. Very lovely. No, I can say no one, you know, the crew, the thing, they were all the kids. The kid was terrific. And, um, uh, yeah, the, all, the child actor or the yeah, younger, the, the younger yeah. actor. And the people and the character actors in the thing. And, and almost everyone was, I hate that term character actor, actually, because. I'm not sure if that's a misnomer or not in a way, but but um, simply because I believe acting is acting, and if it's an older person or whatever, it's it it just happens. But uh, unless you have accents, unless you have to stand on your head or whatever you have to do, but it um, it everybody, I can't think of everybody on the set was so they were helpful. In the house we had, getting doing this, that, the other thing, everyone was thoughtful. You know, that's generally true of actors. Once in a blue moon, there's something else, but generally speaking, you know, people are, uh, you know, they re they really they want to do their job too and do it as well as they can. So everyone is. I have to say that it was very very nice. It was out in the country in the, one of the most beautiful snow days I have ever seen. And it, it that was one of the days, but it, um, I'll never remember, I forget that day. It was pretty special, very special. Um, when we were talking uh, before we went live, I'd mentioned that I went to see Eraserhead, a midnight right. movie uh, a few years ago in, in Brookline. And um, for a couple of things there, I, I do think, we talked too about watching a movie on the big screen is the best way to watch a movie. Yes, it is. I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, and, uh, cool. because like I'm watching this film, even though it's dark and it's supposed to be dark, but I'm watching it on the computer. It's just, it, I'm sorry. It doesn't work like, like it will, you know, when I see it again mm -hmm. on, um, on on a large larger screen or even on my tv yeah which, you know absolutely i think there's something too actually when you're in the theater because you can't escape from it it's it's big it's yes. there you're surrounded by the, yes. the I, I, I know i want to start to go to some movies again because i love the idea of walking walking in and that that dark or that semi-darkness and then the darkness goes out i mean you could say it's like the theater that way but the theater is something different a movie is uh, something that's been pre-done and um, it's not like a stage play where you sing it happened there, but there's something about that darkness and, and this particular thing starts in front of you. It's, it's better than even your TV watching it much better, much better. Yeah. And so uh the theater I went to see it at, um, in Brookline, um, Coolidge right. Corner Theater. They have a it's it's uh, been there since the twenties, and so it's got a big old school oh, red right. curtain that you know. So you sit there, it's dark, it opens, and the theater comes up. The screen. It's in up. Brookline. How yeah, far Brookline. That, that's in the Watertown area, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never listen. I grew up in that area. How long ago? This is just for my own edification. But how long ago was? 
uh, that that was built years ago. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, I think the twenties. I think it's been there. Ah, that was yeah. That was before I was born, actually. I mean, some, <laughs> but it, but it, wow, I see, and I never went there. Yes, yeah, the theater. a lot of cool things that play there. But um, what is the name of the, the theater? Uh, Corner, uh, Coolidge Corner Theater. Coolidge Corner Theater. And then on okay. the weekends, they have uh, Coolidge After Midnight. That's, they show a bunch oh, of. Oh, my. Movies. I think I do have a cousin left somewhere. Maybe I could go up there, you know. It, it right. yeah, because it would be interesting to go to see some. I know. Well, the next time I'm in this area. Very good. Um, so, when you were filming Eraserhead, I know it said David Lynch, you know, took years to film that movie. I know we did so, it at American Film Institute uh-huh. mainly. Uh, well, yeah, we did. Um, actually, all of, I, all of the stuff I did. I re- oh, there were so many things I remember. It was done over a period of time. And then he came up to me one day. He said, I don't like what we've done. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I, I mean, I do, he wanted to do something else. And, he, and um, he just did it again. And um, I remember, I rem- you, you know, the fetus or that, that, Baby, yeah. you remember right. that? Mm-hmm. That that would sit on the table always. Um, he had a coterie of, of people that were close to him, too. He had grown up with, done films with, and and they were part of his world. They worked with him in usually everything. Maybe later on, I don't know. But the is different. But it... Um, he had there was this room with this creature which he had made he made everything made the chickens all everything and um this this thing would sit on the table and i tell you it sure seemed real as strange as it was and it 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 could make it cry and it it was very touching in its way. Really, I'll always remember that thing on the table. And um, it sort of started to be something other than, than what it was. And it, it, his ability to make things and to do, do stuff like that was pretty, pretty something. Now he's into meditation. Right there. Yeah. But, um, but um did you see Twin Peaks, the new one? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen all, all the. Yeah, I know. I have to say, I really like that second one. The, uh, yeah, and I love that some of the films he did. Mm-hmm. Really, some of them, just a terrific, terrific. When you're filming something over like a long period of time, do you ever think like this is just not going to ever be finished? Or <laughs> well, well, I think because it was just a long period of time between the first time we did it and the next time we did it, it wasn't, you know, doing it in I see. piecemeal. Right. So it was, it was really his, he knew what he wanted to do. I can't, I, I've never met anyone who did you know, like, like, I mean, quite like he, he knew exactly what he wanted to do most of the time. It, it, it is, um, it was his vision, his his way you know so it um it was quite a guy that way it what did you think like, of Eraserhead the first time you see it because it's you know well, it's, very it's, surreal strange. I know I remember seeing it in New York because I saw him I saw him I remember because he had just done um oh god it was that movie uh about that guy in London Oh, why can't I think of the name of that? That's that's what happens here and there. Um, th- the movie he made about the guy in London. Oh, Elephant oh, Man? Elephant Man, yes. I had seen the stage play and had gone, oh, hum. Uh, so I went to see this and I was so blown away by that film. And the fact that all of those British actors that he had used, he was, um, they were wonderful i i thought that film said the story of this man so far better than the staged play did uh, I, I, there was no question about it so it um but it um uh i was uh, that was the time i met david just when he was going to 
bring out a racer head. And he said, do you want to go see the um, elephant man? So I said, of course. And was just, and I'd seen it on stage. I can't think of not that long before. And mm -hmm. so, but it was wonderful. Wonderful. Um, was it right away that uh, Eraserhead became, you know, the cult classic? Like, did I, you know? Like, you know, that's a good you question, know? and I and, and you, you know that is good. Did did, did it take? Um, I think any time that you that it turns into some some kind of cult kind of classic in that sense, um, uh, probably takes time. Yeah, I would think even something. Uh, Probably because they were playing it in a theater here in New York. Uh, it, it's one of the theaters they play it now every so often, you know, and it's mm -hmm. been quite a while. Uh, I think this had a special quality uh, that headed it that, in that direction. Uh, but I don't know what it was that pushed it. And of course, over the years, it took it, it, it really did. But I, actually, I think you're right in some ways. If you, I think it seemed to go pretty fast in that direction. Yeah, because a lot of people credit it as like the first midnight movie because it would play. Yeah. Midnight. Yes, you're right. Kind of right. started that that term. I right. Think. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I would. Yeah. You know, it's as if. It had almost been set up for that right. in an odd way. And, and I wouldn't know what that means quite, but I do feel, <laughs> I do feel it was ready for that very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Trista, do you have another question? Are there any sorts of roles you have the itch to play that you haven't had the opportunity to yet? Oh, many. Let's put <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's so many. So many out there. Sometimes I think, you know, is there any? Not so much the stage, but sometimes there's, you know, a stage play, or there's even one that you want to do again that you think you could do better. There was a thing called there's a Shakespeare play that that I really loved, which is um, the character is called Volumnia, and it. Um, uh, in Coriolanus, it is. And I always thought, hmm, I could, I think I could do that better now. I think I could, I think I could get a hook on that better, much better, much better than, but uh, there are a couple of little Shakespeare things that I remember with dear, dear stuff. I remember once doing little Merry Wives of Windsor and doing Mr. Quickly as, uh, or as, I think I did it like as if she were a Mer Mer Marilyn Monroe takeoff. This was many years ago, of course, but it it is. But there are there are things like that that you think, ooh, ooh, yeah, I think I could really do that now with a better understanding. There are some um, there are some classics, and but but mainly, I don't know. Everything, you know, almost everything has its own challenges, no matter what it is, actually. And uh, they're worth looking at and trying for. You know? Interesting. So. I watched uh, your short film um, on uh, YouTube now by Paul Kelly. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yes, 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 yes. We did that. It, it, um, that, but, you know, there's another sh short film that we did, I think that is more interesting. Okay. That's that one is sort of like, like it's, it's, I have to say, it's a little too, I mean, what it is, no, let me put it this way. He tried greatly to do something with that and it's, and it records what one looks like very nicely, all of those things, nicely, nicely. But there's a little short film he did called Barred words that you might take a peek at. It's very short, okay. but I really love that because it's you don't know where you're going with it, and it's and it's not laid out in in that 
way, which I like part of it, but it, it, we had great fun, Paul and I, experimenting with different things. And we tried a few other little films and, you know, some, some got sex successful on the circuit, but I mean, most didn't, but it was just great to be able to go to my apartment and make stuff, you know, mm-hmm. right or wrong. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it is great. Yeah. Uh, you said like on the circuit, did you um, ever go to like the film festivals, you know, uh, before a the few pandemic? of them I did with him, actually, we went to a couple, there were a couple, um, but the bard words I did, that was more recent. And he did that. I, I found that a little, more, that, that quite interesting. And then there was other ones about a relationship between a mother and daughter. And there were a few, a couple of others that had, I, I just loved our association of being able to do this and yell at each other and talk to each other and, and do this and then come up with that. It's a great way to learn, learn about film too. Yeah. It's, um, it, it was a great, it's a great opportunity to do it. How did you meet Paul? Oh, I met him. Uh, actually, he was working at John Jay College for criminal justice for years and years and years. And uh, he always loved to write. This is true of a lot of people. They love to write. They love to do, you know, all, all kinds of things. And he liked to make film. And so uh, a girl, a friend of mine said to him, I know a friend who might be right for this part. You want to do uh, another part? It was uh, mother and daughter. I know the perfect person. So we did it. And that's how, how that happened. And um, and I I love that I just love the fact of people trying things for mm-hmm. themselves and for other people. So it's it, it's been a great, terrific association to do that and yeah. to do, you know. So we did that, and uh, that's you know. I'm trying to think of other things that, yeah. But Paul worked there until he retired. And um, and he's always been a lover of Shakespeare and can quote almost anything. So 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 the little, little, little film he did, a thing called Barred Words, is, is, is reminiscent of that. He's a, he's a, He's a very dear person and very, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of stuff together. It was, it was fun. So I don't know if you're aware, but uh, the last thing Mary saw has already been picked up by Shudder. So it's going to uh, be on uh, the streaming site Shudder in 2022. It'll be, it'll be picked up in there, and I'm sure they're showing it around all over the place. Um, but that's, oh, that's great. Great. Good for Eduardo and for his company and the whole thing. That's great. So is that show so you can stream it? Yeah, not till next year, but but it's been picked and up. That's by next Shutter, year. Which is, is really yeah, I'm sure he'll he'll let me know because we talk on occasion. But it it is um oh that's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. that was just a couple of days ago they announced it, so I wasn't yeah. sure. If oh, you know I have another film in that this Fantasia Festival. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, giving birth to a butterfly. Yeah, giving. Have you seen it yet? I have not seen it, but I'm interested in seeing it now. Yeah, you have to see it now. It. I'd be curious what you think about it. I, I wish I'd be curious what you think. I mean, it's 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 really a complica- It's complicated in some ways. It's totally different than this, in terms True. of myself. But I mean, uh, and it was sort of nice to have two two at the same festival. Yeah, definitely. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. How did how did uh, how did that one come about? How did you get involved in uh, giving birth? Oh, I got involved with that in um, well, it's a few years ago now because of the pandemic and the whole thing. Uh, but I, some I, they just asked me, I think, to do it, and and then we started talking about it because it was about it was supposedly which isn't so true in the film when I looked at it, that um, I played two parts at the same time, which okay. I did, but it, um, but it's, it's, it's fascinating. 
I mean, uh, my friend Paul Kelly really, really got it. He understood it, I think. And um, but I love the, the the guys who did it were terrific. They were sweethearts. And um, so I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if, yeah. when you see it and see yeah. what you got out of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we were both uh, like to watch it. I'm sure. Great, great. <laughs> Uh, Tristan, I don't know when that's being shown in the in the yeah. Festival. Look into it because you know we're uh, we're covering a lot of the movies for the for the festival, so we'll look into that. Right, great, great, lovely. Um, when we announced you were coming on, a lot of people asked about you know for a long time they talked about a sequel to Dead Silence. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really think he should. I think he should re-edit that Dead Silence or relook at it and bring it out again. I really think this, I happen to think it's a good film, a really mm -hmm. good film. And um, still plays a little here. It's still playing around. Yeah. 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 yeah well, when I announced you coming on, a lot of people, uh, uh, my friend Emma Dark in, in, um, in UK is a uh, filmmaker, and that's her favorite. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. because I just think James Wan is, I couldn't take, what was saws? The saws, I just, I'm not up to, I wasn't quite up to that, I have to say. But it, um, but this was like a gothic tale, mm -hmm. you know, in many ways, it seemed to me. And I just think he's incredibly talented and uh, in, in what he does, how he sees things and all of that. Um, sometimes I think that the studio maybe got too much in the way of, of dead silence, but I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I shouldn't say that anyway, but. What, what I, do you mean by that? Uh, how they released well, it? Or? I don't know. It seems as though somehow, um, somehow maybe he, I felt um, he didn't have total control and maybe he did. Maybe this is a fallacy on my part uh, that that somehow the use of that wonderful puppet, which was so fabulous, was too much so that it became less scary. I don't know. If you ever look at it again, say, I'd be curious. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no. But it was, anyway, it's a terrific film in many ways. Many ways. I, I think he's terrific. Yeah, and so he had, like you said, he did Saw, and then he did that, uh, your movie, and then, you know, Conjuring, and then he really, you know, has become, you know, a big name in, in genre films, James Wan. It, so what, he, he, he still make obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's, um, I just think he's terrific. Nice guy, too. Very nice. Very sweet. Was there the writer ever on set, Lee Winnell? Uh, you mean on Dead, in Dead Silence? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, he probably was. Yeah, but I had him on the show years ago. He was, he was very nice. Pardon me? He was on the show years ago. He was a really nice guy. He, oh, he was. I didn't, I probably met him at that time, but I was probably trying to figure out how to uh, <laughs> be a ventriloquist. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Get more on your mind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> but I also did a movie called Talk About a Lovely Guy who wrote, um, I did a thing with Joaquin Phoenix called mm. uh, You Were Never Really Here. Yeah, that's a really, that's a great movie. It's really wild. It's kind of wild. Mm. And she, I think, is a fabulous filmmaker. I think she's wonderful. Yeah, but um, anyway, that's, that's something. Yeah. Uh, Trissa, do you have another question? What do you look for in a script? Oh, I, you mean in a sense of working on it? Or I mean, because mainly uh, you get, you, you get a script and you get, um, uh, you, you, you try to figure out how you're going to do it because, um, you just do, because what comes to me is I'm not going to do every script. I, I'm not going to go do everything, obviously, uh, because there'll be some things that are impossible. 
And, uh, but generally, you want to do it. You want to do it. And so you, um, then you start to work on it. And you start to, it, it, you, your body and mind just starts to think about how do I fit into this? How do I, how do I wear this in a way? How do I wear this, uh, this person? How do I wear her? And so that's, that's usually it. And just, just let it percolate a little bit in, in the beginning. Don't, I don't do too much if I've got time, <laughs> if you've got, if you've got so, uh, lots of time, let's say that it's not being done till later. And then you can take time to let that percolate for a little bit before you start making any decisions, you know, uh, any decisions about how you think you're going to bring it onto the set the first day or whatever. And um, it's, it, it's different every time. I remember doing Orange is New Black, for instance. It was strange. I mean, it was strange because for a while they didn't fill it in. And they needed me to sort of let them know what, uh, what how I saw it or how I was going to fill it in. So there are all different ways that... that you find out things. You find out things through the people you're working with too, the act, other actors, and what they, how they respond to you. You know. Does uh, meeting the director ever um, influence your decision to do a project? Because you mentioned a lot of uh, interesting, you know. Um, oh, these are all very interesting people you'd like to work with. So far that I've, I've mentioned all of them, and um, you know, so. I see, like, for instance, I sensed with Eduardo a, a, an openness. I, I felt he, he got me, you know, got who I was in a way. And I, uh, or not was, but w could, could do for him and I could, I could do for him and he could do for me. It was, um, so those are interesting moments where you feel the director is attuned to you to myself in some way. Um, there's a couple of questions I want to ask um, the people sent in Facebook. Uh, Shannon want to know if there was any story involving why you're uncredited in Silent Night, Deadly Night. Where I'm uncredited you're un in Silent Night, Deadly Night. I was never in that. No, well, that's probably why you're uncredited. That's it's, probably uh, it's, on, it's on your IMDb as uncredited. Oh, it's wrong. That, that a friend of mine was going to... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh -huh. A friend of mine was going to take out. I don't know why that continues, but I wasn't. It's very fun. The very first show uh, I ever we ever did is 2006. The first guest was Sid Haig. He just passed away, but um, we brought up IMDb, and he he went on a tirade saying, "Don't never believe IMDb." So <laughs> I, I know. Obviously, this sure. cover it, it supports that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'm not sure that I would say that because I have nothing particularly <laughs> against IMDb. Right, but right. the, um, but uh, that is for sure. I didn't do that. Yeah. Well, that that answers the question. That answers that about, question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are Are you working on anything uh, currently? I know I'm it's a weird with, time right now, but yeah, no, that's I am. I'm working with a friend on this idea for um, an animated, we had done this piece many years ago as a theatrical piece, but it, it is very conducive maybe, I think, to some animation. And so we're, we're thinking of putting this, we'll see, we will see. At, at the moment, uh, other things, no, we'll see what happens Interesting. in the future. So would that be like voice work for the animation? No, actually it, w it would be, Part in part, it would be a different kind of animation, and we haven't quite. Oh, something like maybe like rotoscope. I think. Yeah, right, it. right, exactly. Where, where you would do the piece probably, do it several times. It, 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 the it's a it's a woman. It's a single woman, uh, um, talking about the time she was, um, her her position in the in, in the town and so forth, and and what happens to her with a lion. And it, um, so it, 
it seemed as we started talking about it and my director friend said, well, why not this and that? And so it, um, it, it would be much more, uh, a, I would be acting uh, visually as well as, I, I don't know, the rotoscope is, is an idea. Interesting. Know? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Tristan brought up the painting behind you. Uh, where, uh, the, where did you, where, is there a story behind the painting? Where did you get it? No, this, this. Uh-oh. We can't hear you. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, this is this is an old friend who since has gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Has gone. And um, he 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 did a lot of those little ones in this one. And and I love that it brings so much color and life into the room that that I love it. And so I got all these colorful pillows and things and. So I surrounded myself with color. See, um, yeah, I have pillows and, and things. I, I, I approve. I like this. I, I, it gave me, you know, it gives me hope. <laughs> something, you know. That's something we, we all need right now. Yeah. We all need that. We all can use that. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I mentioned beforehand, you're not on social media anywhere. I think No, no I, I, I don't do that. I, I can't imagine for some reason, I can't imagine doing it, you know, at, certainly at this point in my life. <laughs> now, Tristan, did you have another question before we go here? I do. Yeah, you mentioned orange is the new black. And I just I, I think that was a very important show. It, it really humanized uh, women that are in prison. And so oh. I. I imagine that was a very educational experience for you, and I'd love for you to extrapolate on that. Oh so, well, what was it? What's most interesting of all is just think of all the work all those women got. I mean, for those years, every imaginable type and and difference in person was working and doing. It it was wonderful. And, and because the diversity was so huge in so many different ways, I mean, I learned, I mean, I wasn't on all the time because my part came up and said there were so many people who worked that show and, um, and the regulars too. So it, um, it was, it, I, uh, it, it seemed at times that it was like it was mind boggling the world that surrounded me. And it certainly showed me the incredible diversity of women. But that should be so obvious. But it um, but it it had all of that. It was singers, actors, jugglers, <laughs> things of black, white, gay, combinations of things all over it. It was wonderful. It was very affecting. Um, and people were, people were really quite loving generally. It really was. It was really, I mean, in the beginning, I remember it was difficult because I and they hadn't decided how they wanted this character, my character, to go. And it took a while. And then, then they, they did it, and they did what they needed with her. And it was why. And they were always kind, always open. And it, it was, it was a very, very learning experience that way. Learning about how many women were working in that thing, and that was wonderful. Wonderful. Um, when you're on a show like that, a recurring character, and you get to play, you know, the character longer than like a, a 90 minute, you know, feature film. Um, like, can you just talk about that? Like, uh, you know, being the character, you know, a, a longer story arc or longer character arc than just a. a well, I think it, it just that character, that character was sort of evolved into a like, uh, she seemed like a, not a follower don't say but she seemed like someone who had really been beaten up and 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 so she certainly seemed 
to take directions about beating other people up and a little bit, not beating other people, but the one woman. And, and um, she certainly had a dry attitude uh, about things. And that was kind of fun to do and, and to try because it was unusual what, what came out of it for a bit. And then they decided, you know, they were going to use it. And then they came back to it at the very, very end to do a show that, it it was it was an interesting thing to do it um the woman the person i loved working with well i don't know there were several people i loved working with actually so i can't say that i did love working with lynn ramsey i have to say um and i actually i loved working with eduardo i i'm trying to think of all the people I've mentioned here, I really have enjoyed working with them. I mean, we've I think all that comes done. Through. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I because I have done other jobs where it was little smaller things, little things here, there, and sometimes they didn't work out well, or you get it. It's a little uncomfortable. But the ones I've mentioned today were all comfort zones, ultimately, ultimately. You know, so that's that's lovely. Well, the last thing Mary saw is premiering tonight while we're recording this uh, at um, Fantasia Fest. And also you have another movie coming, uh, give, giving birth to a butterfly. Also, Fantasia right. Fest right. is very exciting. And uh, it's been very uh, it's been lovely to talk with you. It's been great to talk to you, the both of you, I have to say. You made it lovely. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was our pleasure. Absolutely. And congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to, to your show. Well, uh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. All right. and, uh, this has been on about a year now, so it's been a great addition to the show. Great. I'm glad you think so. This was fun for me. So yeah. see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to have you back sometime. Great. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.